welcome to another episode of the Metal Mad Podcast. And today we are going to be talking about Disney's 2005 movie, Sky High. So that ought to be very cool. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is, uh, I'm, I'm going to do my usual shout-outs first. First one goes out to my very best friends in the whole world, Spanky and G, and their podcast, Movie Mayhem. They didn't have a new episode uh, this week, but still, it's pretty cool, and um, just a great, great show, but great podcast, they have uh, great chemistry, and you know, all, all the usual stuff, they're really cool, so definitely take a listen to them, because they're a real, it's a really great podcast. And I also want to give a shout out to probably the best site on the internet, and that's Chucky's Playground. And we just, we always have great conversations on the playground. We get to talk about Chucky stuff, non-Chucky stuff, you know, just great people as well. You know, just great people. It's a great site. Definitely join us. We've reached uh, over 100 likes on Facebook. And we currently have 59 members. We'd love to have more, so definitely join us because it's just a great place to be. And I want to talk about a few things that have happened in the music world. Um, um, I think Tuesday, yeah, Tuesday, U2 released a surprise album on iTunes for free. And the album is Songs of Innocence. And I listened to it on Tuesday, and it's a pretty solid album. You know, it's um, I'm not a huge U2 fan, but I do like their music. Uh, my favorite album of theirs is probably um, Octoon Baby. I think that's a really cool album. Very fresh and original. And uh, these songs on here are pretty cool. The Miracle of Joey Ramone is a pretty good opening track. And um, there are some slow moments here and there. Like, I didn't think Every Breaking Wave... No, yeah, Every Breaking Wave. I didn't think Every Breaking Wave was that great. But, um, yeah. And Volcano... Volcano really does remind me of Vertigo. And the first time I listened to it, I didn't really think about that. But um, when I was listening to it again today, uh, I was just like, yeah, it's pretty, um, it kind of reminds me of Vertigo. You know, which is definitely not bad, because Vertigo is a pretty good uh, rock song. Um, from off of 2004's, I don't know what that was called. I don't know what that one was called, but um, it was in 2004, I know that much. But overall, it's a, it's a solid album. Definitely check it out if you're a YouTube fan. You know, if you're a YouTube fan, you'll definitely like it. And um, recently, Exodus released a new song, and the the lead single is "Salt the Wound," and uh, it has Kirk Hammett from Metallica on. He does a guitar solo on there, and uh, Kirk Hammett was originally like the original guitarist for Exodus, but he left Exodus to join Metallica. And it's a really cool solo. Um, it kind of does sound like what he would do in Metallica. It kind of has that sound. But uh, it's really, really cool. Definitely a great song from Exodus, who's a great thrash metal band. And the album's also going to have Chuck Billy of Testament on there. So I, I can't wait to hear that album, that al- the album. It comes out in October, I believe. It comes out October 14th. So I'm really looking forward to that album. Because it's pretty, it sounds pretty cool so far. So if you like thrash metal, definitely check out Exodus. They're a really cool band. And so now it is time to shoot the shuffle. And at number one, How Long by Michael Schenker from Temple of Rock. Uh, Michael Schenker, a great guitarist. Uh, he was in Scorpions and um, UFO. And uh, just two of them are great rock bands. And uh, he's a great guitarist, and this is his latest solo album, I believe. I believe. And it's a really good song. Number two, Before I'm Dead by Kidney Thieves from Zero Space. And of course, this is the band that did the cover of Crazy on the Bride of Chucky soundtrack. And uh, this album is pretty cool, you know. If you like if you their cover of Crazy on the Bride of Chucky, definitely check out this album. And as well as this band as well, because they're a really cool industrial band. Number three, Another One Rides the Bus by Weird Al Yankovic. Uh, my iPod must love this song, because this has been a lot of shoot the shuffles. <laughs> but anyway, great parody of Queen, you know. 
Number four, we'll grind that axe for a long time by Pantera from Reinventing the Steel. This was Pantera's last album, and it was a pretty cool album to go out on. Number five, Friendship by Tenacious D from Tenacious D. Really cool, funny song from Tenacious D. Number six, Ashes in Your Mouth by Megadeth from Countdown to Extinction. Um, probably their best album, in my opinion. Really, really great album. And this is a really great song that ends the album. And it's really, really cool. Especially the the outro to it. It's really awesome as well. Number seven, Intruder by Van Halen from Diver Down. This is kind of a segue into their cover of Oh Pretty Woman on this album. And it's a pretty cool album. I think Eddie Van Halen uses like a screwdriver or um, or a... He uses some type of tool on there. But yeah, Intruder is a pretty good segue into um, Oh Pretty Woman. Number 8, Freak on the Leash by Korn from Follow the Leader. Um, Really cool um, new metal song. I'm not a huge fan of new metal, but these guys are pretty cool. Number 9, The Last DJ by Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers from The Last DJ. Really cool song by Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. And finally, number 10. The Mission by Queensryche from Operation Mindcrime. As a lot of you know, Operation Mindcrime is one of my favorite albums of all time. And The Mission is my favorite favorite song off that album. It's really cool. Um, it has a great, great guitars, great drums, just great musicianship all around. So definitely check out that album. And so now it's time to talk about Sky High. Sky High was a movie made in 2005 by Disney. And uh, it was actually directed by Mike Mitchell, who's directed Deuce Bigelow, Mel Gigolo, and Shrek Forever After. And it follows the story of uh, all these teenagers who who will go to this superhero school, Sky High, which is up in the sky. And, um, you know, they try to be superheroes, and the whole movie is just them figuring out their powers and what they're going to do with them. So, is this movie pretty good is it you know is it a wordy disney movie or does it kind of crash and burn and fall into the ground well that's what we're here to find out let's take a look at sky high and um sky high centers around this kid named will stronghold who is the son of Jetstream and the commander who are played by um kelly preston and kurt russell respectively and uh, the parents are pretty cool as well. And um, the first thing that the bus, the bus is pretty cool as well, because it's driven by Ron Wilson, bus driver. And um, so, in Sky High is actually in the sky. It's a, pretty much a floating school, and that, that's a pretty cool kind of thing, you know. And uh, all the kids have. Um, like this kind of test, which um, power placement, and then it places you into hero or sidekick. Well, and sidekicks they still call they call hero support, and I guess that's kind of like uh, the politically correct term, you know, in this movie, you know. And the gym teacher of all people is played by Bruce Campbell. Uh, he, he's pretty funny in this one. I was hoping that he would one. I, I was really hoping that at one point in this movie, he would just pull out a chainsaw and just slaughter all the evil kids. Unfortunately, that ends up never happening. But um, it would have been really cool if it did. And Will is placed into hero support. And all all the classmates have like these kind of weird powers. Like one kid can just melt for no reason at all. Another one glows in the dark. Another one shape shifts into a guinea pig. And um, and they are put into uh, a hero support class, which is taught by um, All American Boy or Mister Boy. And he's played by, uh, let's see here, and uh, he's played by, he's played by Dave Foley, who uh, is one of the people, one of the members of the Canadian comedy group, The Kids in the Hall. 
And uh, he, he's pretty funny in this movie. He's also pretty funny when he gets stars on Hot in Cleveland, which is a show that I'm not afraid to say I watch. <laughs> yeah, but uh, anyway, he's pretty good in that. And uh, he was once the sidekick of the commander. But uh, Will's never heard of heard of him. And um and um the commander the commander shows Will into the secret sanctum after after school. And it's basically like the bat cave, you know, it's kinda like this uh you know, room for superheroes. And he shows him this a uh, weapon, the pacifier, uh, which was taken from Royal Payne, who was kind of like um, the arch, arch enemy of the commander. And I, I believe that there was a deleted scene in... Yes, I think there's a deleted scene on the DVD slash Blu-ray. Hold on. I think, yeah, there's an alternate opening. And that was the alternate opening. And they show clips from that alternate opening when he's talking about how he defeated Royal Pain. And, um, just a, uh, it's not that great of an opening, uh, but it would have been pretty cool, though. And so, um, Royal Pain, who's kind of, who everyone thought, think is dead, they're actually watching from a hidden camera and one of the trophies. So they might come there. And Will also has conflict with, um, War and Peace, and his dad was, um, he was stopped by Commander, and he has, like, four life sentences or whatever. So they kind of, they kind of feud for much of the movie. And, um, they have a fight, they have a fight in the cafeteria. And this is where Will discovers his, that he has super strength. And, uh, that's pretty cool, and it impresses Gwen Grayson. Uh, who's who can control machines with her mind, and she's played by Mary Elizabeth Winstead. He kind of he's transferred from hero support to standard hero classes, and he kind of spends more time with Gwen, the popular kids, and uh, you know, kind of that. Um, it's kind of standard, you know, kids film stuff, you know. And it's later revealed. I'm just going to skip to the end. Um, it's revealed that Gwen is royal pain, and she throws a party like a homecoming dance to trap the commander and Jetstream, who are receiving some type of award. And um, so Will and oh wait, the pacifier is repaired by Royal Pain and her um, assistant, and she. Pretty much turns most of the people into the school, into babies, which is kind of silly, but, you know, it's it's a superhero film, so why not? And it, it does kind of, like, kind of mock, um, you know, classic, um, classic superhero stunts. Because superheroes, very classic superheroes can be pretty silly as well, so I thought that was a kind of a clever way of kind of mocking it, you know. And so, um, all the sidekicks have to stop, um, have to stop Royal Pain and kind of her, um, her posse as it was. Um, there's this one cheerleader who can, uh, duplicate herself. There's Speed who can run really fast. And, uh, Lash who, uh, can stretch like Mr. Fantastic from Fantastic Four. <laughs> and I think this one actually came out the same year as Fantastic Four, now that I think about it. But anyway... They are able to stop them, and they turn everything back to normal, and they're all celebrated as heroes. And, um, Will and Layla, who is, uh, kind of the love interest of Will for a, a while, they get together, and that's that. So that's Sky High, and, uh, you know, it's pretty cool, you know, I, I, I do like the film. Um... So that's Sky High, and I do like the film. You know, I, not to repeat myself, but I do like this film. I mean, it's not anything special. It's not anything, like, fantastic or something like that. But it's still pretty good, you know, for a kid's film. And Disney, when it comes to their live-action films, they don't do that great of a job with it, at least recently, anyway. 
just some of their live action stuff can be pretty stupid, you know. But um, overall, I think this movie is pretty cool. You know, I think kids will like it. Some teenagers will like it as well. It's can, it can be pretty funny. It, it is kind of self aware. You know, I think at one point, Mr. Boy is talking about how superheroes pick their sidekicks' covers and names as to avoid clashing covers. And it's clearly a jab at Batman and Robin. You know, because Batman always wore dark, black colors. And Robin, at least in the classic uh, comics and even in the live action series in the 60s, he wore like, red and green or, or something like that. Very colorful character. So he really did just kind of clash. You know, so that was a really cool way to kind of take a jab, a loving jab at Batman and Robin. And it is true, you know. So, yeah, Sky High is pretty cool. Um, if you're looking for a superhero film that's a bit out of the norm, I, I guess, um, definitely check it out because it's pretty funny and it's pretty cool. So that's it for this episode of the Metal Mat Podcast. Hope you enjoyed this episode, and when I come back on Wednesday, I will be looking at a film that I very much enjoy, that I absolutely love, and uh, no matter how many times I watch it, it never really gets old, and it's just really, really funny, and a bit a bit strange, but pretty cool as well, and the movie I'm going to, that I'm going to be taking a look at is UHF with Weird Al Yankovic. That's going to be a fun episode, so I'll see you next Wednesday.